Introduction On this mission we will practice the cold start procedure for the CC variant of the C101. The general sequence will be Before starting the engine Starting the engine Before taxi Press, spacebar, to begin Before starting the engine First, if the cockpit interior is too dark, activate the flashlight with left alt plus L Press, spacebar, to continue Open the oxygen valve lever, on the right console, with a right click The next action would be carried out by the flight instructor at the back seat But as this mission is for single player we will do it ourselves Press the number 2 key, to move onto the back seat Press, spacebar, once you are on the rear cabin Set the oxygen pressure warning switch to both, with a right click Next, open the oxygen valve lever of the back cockpit, with a right click Finally, remove pin from the canopy fracturing handle Press, spacebar, once the pin is removed Good now press the number 1 key, to return to the front cockpit. Press, spacebar, once you are on the front seat. On the right console, remove pin from the canopy fracturing handle. Press, spacebar, on the air conditioning panel, on the right co close the canopy. This way, you will be forced to communicate with ground crew only using the intercom, shouting at them with the open canopy won't be possible. Use the yellow canopy lock handle to lock it. In order to use the intercom, to talk to ground crew, we need electric power. Turn the battery master switch to on. Check the voltmeter, it should read 23 to 24 volts. Press, spacebar, to continue. Click on the master warning light, to silence the alarm. Click also on the caution light, to acknowledge it. Activate the floodlights, for a better view of the side consoles, to indicate that a pilot is on board. Turn navigation lights to on. Use bright on day, dim on night. We will now ask the ground crew to connect a ground power unit, GPU, to the aircraft. Place audio selector on INT, intercom. Click call button. The DCS communication menu will open. Press F8 to contact the ground crew. Press F2 to get the ground electric power submenu. Press F1 to have the GPU connected to our aircraft. Chief, turn on the ground power. Copy. Ground power is now on. The green GPU indicator indicates that the external GPU is now connected to our aircraft. Click the highlighted button to switch the GPU onto the aircraft's electric circuit. The GPU button will display on once the GPU is online. The batteries are automatically disconnected, as indicated by their off lights. Press, space by accelerometer. Reset to 1G by clicking on its knob, altimeter. Adjust to airfield altitude, by setting it to the correct QNH of 29.92 inches of mercury. Press, spacebar, to continue. Backup altimeter. Adjust to same airfield altitude as the main altimeter. Press, spacebar, to continue. Now that we have GPU power, we can activate the panel's backlighting. Adjust the instrument panel backlighting, until you can clearly see the labels of the electric panel. Adjust the side console's backlighting. Press, spacebar, to continue. DC bus tie switch. Set to on, up, right click. Click on the master warning light, to silence the alarm. Click also on the caution light inverter switch. Set to standby, left click. The aircraft has two inverters, normal and standby. We are now using the standby one ignition light test button. Press to check the lamp. You can rotate it with the mouse wheel to adjust its brightness. Press, space bar, to continue. Computer button. Set to on, its light should be unlit. Press, space bar, to continue. Check fuel tank indicators. They should be green if the corresponding tank has fuel, red if empty. The C101 has four fuel tanks. Fuselage. Wing center. 
left and right wings. It doesn't have external fuel tank capability, nor aerial refueling. Press, spacebar, to continue, test fuel transfer pump, left wing tank. The pump has two modes, auto, right click, and MA new all, left click. Test both modes, checking that the pressure light turns green for each mode of the pump. At the end of the test leave the pump on the off position. Press, test fuel transfer pump, center wing tank. Repeat the previous test with this pump. At the end of the test leave the pump on the off position. Press, space, test fuel transfer pump, center wing tank. Repeat the previous test with this pump. At the end of the test leave the pump on the off position. Press, space bar, to continue. Test fuel transfer pump, right wing tank. Repeat the previous test with this pump. At the end of the test leave the pump on the off position. Press, space bar, to continue. Activate fuel transfer pump. Activate fuel transfer pump. Activate fuel transfer pump. Activate fuel transfer pump. Press the fuel quantity selector push button to check the fuel amount on the tanks. If FUS is lit, the meter shows only the amount on the fuselage tank. If FUS is on lit, it is showing the sum of fuselage tank plus wing center tank. Check both readings. Press space submerge fuselage tank pump. Switch to on, unlit. Fuel shutoff valve. Switch to on, unlit. Press and hold the engine fire warning light and check that, on the master warning panel, the fire warning light also illuminates. Press, space bar, to continue. Check the voltmeter, it should read 28 volts. Press, press the fuel flow test button, on the instruments panel, to check the fuel consumption meter. It should show 1200 pounds and, if you keep the button pressed, the counter should advance 10 pounds on 30 seconds. Press, space bar, to continue. Test the master warning panel lights, by right click and hold the highlighted switch. The switch to its left, allows you to select either bright or dim warning lights. Press, space bar, to continue. Check the essential bus transfer button. It has two positions, Connection to secondary bus, on is lit, or connection to primary bus, unlit. Leave it on this latter position. Press, space bar, to continue. Inverter switch. Set to normal, right click. Up to this moment, we were using the standby inverter as a test. Now, we switch to the normal inverter for the flight. We will now use the UHF radio, to ask air traffic controller permission to start the engine. On the VUHF radio panel, on the front instruments panel, turn the function selector to A3, track to set the TR frequency, this radio has both a manual mode and a preset mode. On this mission, we will use the preset mode, so turn the frequency mode dial to the P position. The ATC frequency on this airbase is 254 MHz, which correspond to the preset 12 of this radio. Use the thumb wheel, until 12 is displayed on the preset channel display. Right click to increase on the audio panel, place audio selector on VU, VHF UHF. Click the call button, the DCS communication menu will open. Press F5 to contact the air traffic controller. Press F1 to select the MyCop airbase. Press F3 to request permission to start. Once the controller gives you clearance, Compliant. press F12 to close the one, communications one. menu. Request press, space bar, to continue. Enfield one, one. Starting the engine. Turn on the anti-collision beacon, to signal everyone that the engine will be starting shortly. Ignition switch to start, right click, keep for 2 seconds. Indicator light is lit. When N2 reaches 10%, click on the throttle lever to advance it to idle position. Check that the warning fuel prey turns off on the warning panel, as the fuel pump activates automatically. ITT should have reading before 10 seconds. N1 should show reading before N2 reaches 20%. Oil pressure should rise within 10 seconds. 
the fuel flow meter should show 200 pounds per hour. The ignition light stays on until N2 reaches 50%, at that moment the starter and ignition disconnect automatically. Engine is stable when N1 is at 29 to 33% and N2 between 58 to 71%. Press, abort the startup if A. No ITT reading within 10 seconds of moving the throttle into idle. B. N2 does not increase quickly up to 24%. C. There is no N1 reading before N2 reaches 20%. D. ITT reaches 850 degrees. E. No reading of oil pressure within 10 seconds of startup. If the engine start has to be aborted, put the throttle lever at stop, by clicking on it, and keep press the abort switch. Press, switch GPU to off, the battery lights should go off. Contact ground crew to disconnect the GPU. Place audio selector on INT, intercom. Click call button, the DCS communication menu will open. Press F8 to contact the ground crew. Press F2 to get the ground electric power submenu. Press F2 to have the GPU disconnected from our aircraft. Copy. The green GPU indicator is now unlit, indicating that the external GPU has been disconnected from our aircraft. Press spacebar to continue. We will now activate the generator. Place the generator switch on reset, down position. Left click. Now, place the generator switch to on, up position, right click. Next, we will test the generator. The X Gen CC warning light should lit during the tests. Switch first to the GF, ground failure test, up position, right click. Now, place the switch on the OV, overload failure test. To end the tests, place the switch on the off position. Click on the master warning light to silence the alarm. Uncage the backup artificial horizon. Power up the IFF, turn its master selector to the standby position. Check hydraulic pressure, normal range is 2850 to 3050 psi. The warning light prey hitter should be unlit. Press, spacebar, to continue. Extend and retract the air brake, using the HOTAS or the B key, while checking the indicators. Press, spacebar, to continue. Extend the flaps, using the HOTAS or the left shift plus F or left control plus F keys, to the takeoff position and then the down position. Leave them on takeoff. Press, spacebar, to continue. Check elevator trim. Set to minus 1.5 degrees. Check aileron trim. Set to 0 degrees. Press, spacebar, to continue. Check pitot heat. Turn to on if the flight will encounter low temperatures. Press, spacebar, to continue. Check that the stall warning switch is set to on. Press, spacebar, to continue. Check the engine's anti-icing system. Activate if needed, and check that the anti-ice indicator is lit. Press, spacebar, to continue. Set radio altimeter switch to on, up right click. Power on the VHF and nav radio. Set radio mode to PWR position. Set navigation mode dial to nav. We will now check the engine's computer. Throttle to idle. Disconnect the computer, the warning light computer illuminates. Wait for the engine to stabilize, then press, spacebar, to continue. Smoothly increase throttle to 75%, be sure that the parking brake is set, and then back to idle. 
check that N2 responds to the throttle. Press, spacebar, to continue. Click on the caution light, to acknowledge it. The test is finished. Connect the computer by clicking on its button. Check that the Attitude and Heading Reference System AHRS, gyroscopes, have finished their alignment. The following headings should match. RMI Heading HSI Heading Magnetic Compass Heading If they match, the AHRS is aligned. Press, spacebar, to continue. This finishes the cold start procedure. The sequences covered were Before starting the engine Starting the engine Before taxi the taxi and takeoff procedures will be covered on the next mission. You can now press escape and exit this mission.